We decided to keep the baby. There was never a question in my mind. My boyfriend, he wanted to marry me. I thought it was the right thing to do. I was only 15. <laughs> my parents, they didn't choose that quickly. The position that they were in, to put it mildly, was hard. My dad suggested that both families, my parents and my sisters, his mom, stepdad, sister, niece, that we all go camping one weekend so that we could talk about options. And knowing what I know about my dad now, to allow him the space to think and to ponder what he should do. He tells the story that his answer came while driving on a mountain freeway, windows down, smelling the fresh air. When this song came on and sank deep into his heart, Papa don't preach, I'm in trouble deep. Papa don't preach, I've been losing sleep. And I made up my mind, I'm keeping my baby. <laughs> I'm really not even kidding. That's the way his answer came. When that song was blaring, he felt hot tears on his cheeks. And the overwhelming feeling that he needed to let me lead out in this decision. He gained some understanding that helped him to see that I would need to look back on my life. Knowing that I made my decisions and not that they were made for me. <laughs> my dad allowed me to make my choices and he talked to me a lot. He referred to me as an emancipated adult. He said that that meant that I was assuming the responsibilities of adult and making adult decisions before becoming an adult. He said, it means you're making big time decisions, Mish. <laughs> When he referred to me that way, he did so very kind and loving. Like he was placing me on a pedestal and giving me the confidence that I needed to make the hard choices that were in front of me. He would say, hey Mish, you're an emancipated adult. What do you think? And then he would listen and he would support my choices. He put trust in me. And in the same breath, he taught me about the natural progression of a parent. Using a basketball analogy, he said parents usually start out sitting on the floor, rolling the ball back and forth with their child. And then they teach them how to bounce the ball. And they lift them high so they can make a basket. <laughs> the next role that they move into is playing alongside with them. And the next is that of becoming their coach. During this stage, they describe the game to their child. They teach them detailed plays and show them how to improve overall. He said the next stage is the one that he would now be assuming. And that is moving into the stands and becoming a fan. He said when parents move into the stands, they can no longer just walk up to their kid and start coaching them. <laughs> he said, we have to wait for our kids to come off of the court so that we can talk. As a parent in this role, you have to be asked your advice to give it. He talked to me about how that might not seem natural for me because I had skipped parts of the analogy, but he assured me that he would be there in the stands cheering for me and ready to give me advice at any moment. Through my dad's communication, I learned that sometimes the wisest choice that I could make when I was out on the court is to ask my dad to meet me in the locker room so that I could talk with him about the choices that were in front of me. By allowing me to make my decisions, as an emancipated adult and teaching me how to come to him for advice was his way 
of wisely still being my parent while allowing me the space that I needed to slip into the role of becoming a confident adult. He embodied the words of Ham Gino. Treat a child as though she already is the person that she's capable of becoming. My friends, it is in the seemingly unimportant decisions that we make in life that impact us the most. The way that we communicate with our loved ones can lift, empower, and even alter the course of their lives. We have more power than we think we do.